Lori Robertson with the Berkeley Blend. Today I am here with our city manager, Matt Baumgarten, and our new chief of police, Matt Kane. Stay tuned. Lori Robertson with the Berkeley Blend. Uh, today we are chatting with Matt Baumgarten and Matt Kane. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you so much for meeting me here today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having uh, Matt, me. Matt, uh, welcome to back, I should say, to our city of Berkeley. Uh, how is your transition going? I've been going very well. Uh, I've been uh, nothing but happy with the welcome I've received from uh, the officers of the Public Safety Department and the public. Uh, um, it seems like I've never left, and sometimes, and sometimes it seems like I've been gone forever because. Uh, uh, I haven't been gone for, for quite a while, but uh, the transition has been going very smooth. Good. Uh, you are a Berkeley graduate? I am. I uh, grew up in uh, Berkeley and Huntington Woods and went to Berkeley Public Schools. Um, and I've lived within two miles my entire life, uh, so I'm kind of a homer. Well, welcome back. Thank you. We're happy to have you. Glad to be here. Matt, how are things going with the city? Things are going very, very well. Yeah, we're excited. Um, I, the first thing I want to talk about is I want to thank you for the crosswalk improvement in front of the high school. I know we chatted about that quite a while ago. I, I'm really appreciative that the lines are repainted, um, and we have the wonderful signs um, that I uh, encouraged us to get. I'm really, really happy to see them. I know that Councilman Jack Blanchard also helped with that endeavor. Absolutely. Um, so a big, huge shout out to him. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'll really increase awareness. Um, I don't know, um, Matt, if you're aware that, or you probably are aware, that we're also uh, kind of battling a problem at the Anderson uh, middle school and the traffic pattern there. Um, would you like to touch on that for a little bit? Sure. We, we always evaluate safety um, no matter where it is. And, and one of the things uh, we're concerned about is Catalpa is, uh, is a busy street and uh, anything we can do for visibility, we'll, we'll do that. And uh, we're exploring the possibility of possibly putting some of the uh, temporary cross crosswalk signs on Catalpa in front of Anderson Middle School also. That would be fantastic. I think that would help a lot um, with the crossing guard there. And, and um, maybe just bring awareness that it's a state law that you have to stop at the, yeah. you know, in a crosswalk if a pedestrian is crossing. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people realize that that actually is a state law. Um, so hopefully that will help. Um, and what about the changes coming to the Coolidge and 11 Mile intersection? So that's a, uh, so Royal Commission of Oakland County has actually has initiated that process now. Uh, as we speak, there's, uh, there's been markings put into the pavement. The, uh, the vendor is going to be dance excavating. They're going to start that project probably within the month and have it done before the end of the calendar year. So, actually, yeah, then before the end of the calendar year, it should be in. Um, looking forward to having a, a dedicated left turn there, so you don't have to do this sort of peek around to make sure that there's nobody coming if you're uh, traveling from Coolidge towards uh, Woodward. So, it'll be a much much safer situation there. Okay, it's, it's, so it's going to be elongated. Yes, you'll have a queued up uh, left turn lane there, okay. and so it'll be dedicated, and you can make that turn with a signal this time, as oh, opposed nice. to just hoping and going. Um, and that, I really have to credit uh, not only Road Commission of Oakland County, Derek Schuler, our own DPW director, as well as our two neighbors, Huntington Woods and Oak Park. It's, it's been a great collaboration between the three. All three uh, cities and the county, they all realized that there was a problem that needed to be solved. Okay, that's awesome. That'll be a really good improvement, mm -hmm, so. um, especially for safety. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a little bit about how the ice arena auction went? It went well. Uh, we had uh, somebody come in and they we removed a lot of the items that had sort of been sitting around that were attributed directly to ice function, which, uh, as we've said several times, we know that functionality is not coming back to that building, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so it, we made, you know, a little bit of money on there. A lot of the um, the items went well, especially those associated with you know a rec functionality. We had a couple other office support things, and our DPW actually added some items as well. So we got to clear the closets a little bit on uh, some of the other city departments, but um, I would say it went well. It wasn't overly great. You know, we we obviously didn't come away with you know thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I think, um, but we we hit basically right at expectation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, tonight, actually, the CAC and the Parks and Rec yeah. Board are meeting uh, collaboratively to mm -hmm. talk about the new 
Community Center. How is that going along? We're excited about the progress. Um, excited to show these two bodies that the concept that we've sort of been working on. Uh, you know, the CAC, as, as you know, as, as a member, the CAC has uh, really gotten into the nuts and bolts of uh, the funding mechanism of it. Parks, uh, or the Rec Advisory Board, has been working for years on taking feedback and trying to, you know, they've got a great understanding of what they want to see that building do mm -hmm. and the value that they want to see it added to the community. So these two groups coming together, we thought, just made loads of sense as, uh, as a great checkpoint to say, all right, are we on the right track? Is this hit? Does this hit well with both of your expectations? Do you feel comfortable enough um, to, that we should move forward on this? Uh, I'm really excited about the public meeting that we're going to have where we get to do a sort of citywide unveiling. Uh, I think people are going to love the concept. They're going to love the intent behind it and the versatility of this building. It's going to be unlike anything we have right now. Do um, you know when the public hearing will be approximately? Approximately it will be the, the first... First half of January, okay. um, probably sometime in the second week or so. Oh, so it's uh, coming up quick. Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. We actually need to move on this because um, the CAC uh, wanted this to happen as soon as possible. We weren't able to get it on the November ballot. Right. The next available one is May. So if we're going to, you know, continue to try to do our due diligence to get it on the next available ballot, uh, we're working with a, you know, January timeline for approving that language. Okay. And then uh, I may ask of our residents. So. Okay. Uh, I've actually, unfortunately, missed quite a few city council meetings because um, I have a standing appointment with Urban Gym on Mondays. Uh, so what has been happening with the council? Anything new that I should know about? Yeah, the, big, the biggest thing is we said goodbye to the 36th council and welcomed in the 37th. Um, that includes a new mayor, Dan Turbrek, and that includes a new council member, and Mr. Dennis Hennon. Uh, as of right now, as of filming this, we still have a vacancy uh, vacated when... Uh, former council member, now Mayor Turbrecht, uh, took the oath of office. And our city council has been working through a process to try to fill that. And they've made a real intent this year, or this time, to be as absolutely as transparent as possible. They okay. convened a subcommittee that met in a public meeting. We got, and it's amazing to say, 20 applications to fill that position. I, I heard people say the last time that uh, we had a vacancy, they had three or four. Wow. So really excited that so many people have gotten so active and, and want to have a part in determining the city's future. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, six of those candidates um, came and spoke in front of council during the December 4th meeting. And council is uh, was going to be making that appointment at the December 18th meeting. Okay. And that person will be officially seated as of uh, the first meeting in January. Oh, excellent. Okay. And so they'll be official, and it's the way we go with the 37th council. And so if people have missed that particular city council meeting where they spoke, that you can mm -hmm. find that on YouTube. I absolutely recommend they watch it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. The, to hear the passion of these six individuals, why they serve, many of them are already active in the community. Uh, it, it's really moving to hear people talk about local government and and just service and community. Uh, it just reaffirms the love of Berkeley. Good. That's good to know. Um, what, tell me about the rain barrel sales. How has that been going? And in conjunction with that, I wanted to ask you, um, on Facebook, I have the probably the biggest issue that I saw in the last few weeks where um, some people were receiving astronomical water bills, like in the to, to, to the tunes of like $700. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um so I was wondering, kind of, how is the and, and didn't you also just just have a water management meeting, or is that coming up? We've done a couple of different things lately. So we, okay. we just did a, uh, a public information meeting, actually on rain barrels. So we had I was really really impressed again with with our city. Um, we had a discount period leading up to our uh, meeting on November thirtieth, where people could pre-order rain barrels, and we had an expert come in and kind of talk about them. It forty five rain barrels pre ordered. Oh, wow. that was That's great. Over the moon. That's great. Um, and they were on a reduced rate, and, and people really took advantage of it. I was so excited about it. And in that same meeting, we also had a, um, a representative from Paul C. Scott Plumbing come in and talk about backwater check valves and how that can help uh, protect somebody's home from sewer surcharges, from from flooding. How whatever we want to say it, it's mm -hmm. it's a great protection for the home. A lot of really good questions there. People asking about, you know, how does this work? And how does this actually go in? How can I clean it? All the right questions. So I think people who sat during that, or sat through that meeting, came away with, uh, if, you know, if they're going to do it, they know the right questions to ask their plumber, and that's that's huge when you're trying to get uh, a project like this off the ground. 
So hopefully they take advantage of it soon. We uh, city council extended the permit reimbursement program. So yeah, so if you uh, if you get a ch if you get a check that I'll put in, we'll actually once you go through all of the inspections and pull the permits and everything is signed off on, we'll reimburse the permit uh, fees. Okay. Just because we're so excited that you took this step in protecting your home. Um, so that was that was really good. That meeting was filmed at the library and it will continue to be shown on our YouTube channel as well as WBRK. And then we posted the um, slides as well. Okay. So that, again, people can either see it visually, they can print it, but uh, it, it really arms our residents with the tools that they need to, to move forward on and those. Do you know what the deadline is for the permit? It's the end of February. End of February. Uh, okay, right so that now, gives us a, a, yeah. a few more weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's about six months after you know the August 28th flood. Uh, it's another couple of months after the November 30th flood, and plus it just gets you kind of past the holiday haze. Okay. And so you still have time, even after you get past that, to yeah. sit down and say, oh, is this right, is this right for my home? Yeah. Um, so I, I do hope people take advantage of it. Uh, do you know the cost of rate barrels? They were, I think they're $70 now. Uh, the discounted rate was 50, 50 or 55 Okay. Okay. Um, and we, we worked with MI Rain Barrel, that is a comma or, but it's, if you search Michigan Rain Barrel, you'll see the MI Rain Barrel, uh, maybe even .org. Um, and great group. Uh, Josh Rubin, who is the owner, actually uh, uses them out of repurposed olive oil or olive containers. And so olive barrels? The, the olive barrels, yeah. So, you're, you're, so it's an, even it's upcycling. So it's just sustainable to its max. It's It really is a great company. Uh, what do you think is happening with these uh, large water bills, these $700 water bills? I think there's a couple factors at play. Now, we uh, as of January, July 1, we did increase the, the water. Actually, we really redid the entire way we calculate water bills and the intent there was to add a capital component and what that what a capital component does for us is it puts money away specifically for infrastructure improvement so that is going to that's going to translate directly to new pipe in the ground and we uh, over hopefully a long enough timeline we'll start to see uh, water main breaks go down we'll start to see service interruptions go down and in a lot of these situations, we're going to start moving over to a PVC pipe where a, a metal pipe may live on for 60 to 70 years. We're grateful we've gotten you know, a lot longer out of some of them. But your, your PVC pipes, it's a really high density pipe. It can be 100 to 120 years. Uh, we're excited about having some longevity in that infrastructure as well. So yes, the, yes there's um, probably a, people paying more of a cost per unit. But also what we see is uh, Bills going to effect in July. It was your hottest, warmest months. Um, sometimes you see people that they rely more on sprinklers if they water more during the uh, drier months. Then that translates into a higher summer bill anyway. We we know that across the city our consumption goes up during that time. And if you look back over the summer, we had very long, dry, hot periods, mm -hmm. and then we ended up getting too much rain at once. But then it would go right back to being a long, dry, hot period. So. I, I, my guess is it would be people relying more on you know sprinkler systems, but if they have a question, feel free to call DPW. Okay. Uh, we can certainly print off a history. You can compare apples to apples. Uh, you know what did I use in this this exact building last year, two years ago? Uh, it might have somebody gauge their usage. Okay, I wonder if uh, filling pools also could be a huge. It, yeah, yeah. And you sometimes have that. Don't have a pool. Um, Matt, uh, are there going to be some more changes coming to Coolidge um, in terms of crosswalks? And um, I think at one point maybe the DDA was talking about crosswalks at Dorothea and Coolidge. Dorothea and Coolidge and Earl Mott and Coolidge. And oh. those, I believe the contract's been signed, if I'm not mistaken. So those should be coming up, uh, hopefully be installed in the very near future. And obviously that will increase the safety of people crossing uh, Coolidge. Um, so hopefully those will be up and running here in the next month or so. Have you found uh, that you have been um, maybe handed over like a, a, you inherited maybe like a huge, like what's your biggest uh, obstacle right now? Um, I, I think my biggest obstacle is just getting to know people. Um, you know, I, I, I was with Fire McNeils for 31 years, so I was very comfortable. I, I knew the residents, I knew uh, council, I knew city administration, I knew the people that worked for me. Um, so my biggest obstacle right now is just getting to know people, um, and I, I think you make better decisions when you're personally involved and, uh, you know, living in this area my entire life. It's not like I'm uncomfortable here, mm -hmm. but it's, it's getting a little more intimate, for lack of a better term. Okay. Uh, you'll get there, though. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, we were discussing earlier. You have a new audience now for your dad jokes. Yes. And, you know, so I'm sure that'll come for really. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> um, what is the maybe what are, what are the easiest things that you've come across? Um, I think the easiest thing to come across is really the interaction. Everybody has been so great. Uh, um, you know, I, I was welcomed by everyone. Uh, probably half the public safety department, and you know, this is a 24-7 operation, so that people sleep at all times, and people work weekends and nights, and uh, probably half the department came to welcome me my first day, and that was very nice to see, and quite honestly, I wasn't expecting that, because oh, um, I know how hard it is to get up when you're, uh, you know, it's really in the middle of the night for you to come yeah. in to, to see me, so that was great, and, um, you know, people come up and say hi, you know, a lot of people I went to high school with come up and say hi, I'm getting contacted all the time, and I bump into names I see all the time, so that part's great. It, it, it is like coming home. Um, I went into Berkeley High School, I think, probably for the first time since I graduated uh, um, uh, last month, um, and that was kind of surreal. Is um, so Mr. Blaney still there? Um, he was still there when I, I'm not sure if he's still there now, but he was there when I, uh, Dr. Mikulski was my principal oh, when, yes. uh, when I graduated. So. Do you have any projects coming up? Uh, we're kind of in the middle of a few projects. We're looking at replacing the generator for the public safety uh, building. Um, it's, it was originally, its original generator came with the building when it was built uh, in the late 80s. So uh, we're working on that right now. And then um, we're researching the purchase of a new aerial truck uh, for the for the fire side. Uh -huh. uh, the truck we have is uh, is probably 20, 25 years old also. It's, it's approaching the end of life. And those are major purchases, obviously. So you want to make sure you do it right the first yes. time. There's not a second. Not a, both of those we expect to last, uh, um, maybe even after I'm dead, because you know both those hopefully will last 25, 30 years. Um, not to lessen my life expectancy, but uh, those will be around for a while. So we want to make sure we do it right the first time. You don't want to, uh, you know, you don't, don't want to make a mistake on on something like that. I think at the last council meeting that I was at, they approved the generator. I thought. Yes. Yes. Uh, we're, we're still uh, we're still tweaking that a little bit. Okay. Uh, we've run into some issues like any any. Uh, construction or building projects and things come up when you're in the middle of it, so uh, we're still kind of working through that. Uh, did I see uh, on the website that you are in need of a dispatcher? Um, actually, we just filled that, oh. well, we just uh, made a conditional offer uh, for that position, so uh, that, that position will hopefully be filled uh, relatively soon. Once that happens, we'll be, we'll, we'll be at full staff. Okay. Um, you know, we did. We just had a recent retirement that, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at replacing that position also, but... Uh, um, Obviously, for us, the people are the most important because they're the ones out there doing the job, um, and and we really have to select the right people. I think the dispatcher position would be extremely high stressed. I yes, mean, that that's your life and death right there. Exactly. And I actually started in the dispatcher in Lakeland Village okay. back when I was wow. 18 years old, so, so you know. I know what it's like. Yes. You know. um, awesome. Well, I'm glad that was filled. That was quick. Yes. Good. Uh, what about the city positions? Do they have, you guys have a few positions open, correct? We have two positions open right now, yes. At, uh, currently, we've got a finance director position open. I have an administrative assistant position open, and we're close to hiring our next community development director as well. We have likewise made a conditional offer on that, so we're excited to um, move that person through the hiring process, and if, if hey, all goes well, and I'm sure it will, uh, we'll be back to full strength in that department. So I'm excited about the work that that department is slated to do. Um, as I've talked about in several public meetings now, it, it, changing it over, creating a community development department, I think marks a sea change in the way that we've operated. Um, and I think residents will, will see a difference immediately and then see a sustained change in outlook uh, as we move forward. So okay. um, I'm really excited about that. What kind of winter events can we expect? And by the way, love the snowflakes. Yes, They're yeah. They're so pretty. Well, Downtown Development Authority deserves credit there. They, um, they put a contract together every year and, and have, uh, the last couple of years they've had the cleric come in and they've now extended all the way down Coolidge, yes. all along 12. Yep. Uh, it is, it's, especially as you, you're coming north on Coolidge and you cross over 11 Mile, it's just such a great welcome to see the change there from one it side to the other. Nice. So I, yeah, I love coming home that way, and especially at night. Uh, some other great winter events coming up is we're rounding out a Merry Month. Uh, the DA has put together a whole slate of uh, fantastic activities. Uh, even tonight, I think there's a jazz concert, uh, and there's and even your pet even has an opportunity coming up to come meet Santa. So uh, the whole family is you know covered in, in, in Berkeley. So we're excited about that. Uh, moving on, we've got some some January events as well. Um, my, my mind went all the way uh, immediately went to Winterfest, which is actually in February. 
that our Parks and Rec Department puts on. That's uh, usually the second week in February, so I believe. But uh, as always, if, if people can check the, the city calendar, okay. and we'll make sure to load it up with all the fun things there is to do in the city. So, okay. uh, and that's at ber www.berkeleymich.org, and you click right on the uh, calendar there. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for, hey, you're my first recurring guest. How about that? I know. I feel honored. Yeah. Well, we'll have you back again. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you might not want to, but we're going to have I you I can't again. wait. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much for joining well, us. Thank, it was really nice to meet you. And congratulations on your appointment. Uh, welcome back to Berkeley. Thank you very much. Go Bears, right? <laughs> you got yep. it. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you.